In today's farm report, summer is upon us, and while humans may like it, dairy cattle do not. They actually prefer the throes of winter as it is cooler for them and easier to regulate their body temperature. Jim Solver with the University of Minnesota Extension Service Office talks about how to manage heat stress in warm weather. I think as humans, most of us in Minnesota really look forward to summer. We're really not cold uh, weather animals, at least most of us aren't, but our dairy cows really are, they, they enjoy winter much more than maybe we do, and so now that we move into summer and the, maybe the weather we enjoy, that we really need to be thinking about managing our barns and facilities to minimize the heat stress on our cows. And cows, of course, are no different than humans. Um, we're affected by both the temperature and the humidity and so we've developed something or animal scientists have developed something called the temperature humidity index which is a combination of temperature and humidity and when that number reaches 68 uh, really we create a lot of stress for our high producing cows and we look at kind of a typical um, upper midwest summer for June, July, and August, about 70% of our days will hit that THI level of 68. And so we often think of heat stress in Texas and California and Florida, but we need to be thinking more about heat stress here up in the upper Midwest, especially as our cows uh, produce more amounts of milk. And so as you watch your cows, start watching their breathing. That'll be the, the first thing. They One of the main ways cows dissipate heat is through increasing the respiration rate. So that's probably the first noticeable thing that you might uh, might notice on your cows, other than they'll maybe start decreasing um, dry matter intake and decreasing milk production also. But some of the things that you can get ready for right now, even if it's not hot right now for heat stress, is make sure your, your cooling system is very efficient. Make sure you clean your fans. There's been a lot of good research that's been done that's shown that fans with uh, dirty fins and dirty shutters will reduce the efficiency of those fans by about 30 to 40 percent. So not only are you not getting the cooling effect, you're spending all the electricity to run those fans without it. Make sure you've got any inlets that they're open or your curtains are open, whatever you've got. If you're using sprinklers, make sure that those are all working well ahead of time on your first hot day. So now is really the time to make sure all your heating or your cooling system your heat abatement system for your dairy cows is up and going and then hopefully when we get the cool weather we can kick those systems on and keep our cows more comfortable and producing better through the through the warm weather this has been Jim Selfer with the University of Minnesota Extension in St. Cloud from the battlefield to the farm field military veterans are being matched with opportunities in agriculture we do understand the uh, restorative value of linking folks back to the land and, and having a positive experience growing something and producing something. That's part of the message Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack gave to military veterans visiting USDA. They came to the Ag Department to talk about getting more former military into farming and ranching. While I was going through the healing process, there was a Vietnam vet who uh, would come to the hospital. He'd pick me up and take me to his farm. Retired Army Major Dave Biardi was recovering from combat injuries when farming presented itself. I didn't realize the healing and therapy that was going on. And after about six months, uh, it was transformative. I told my wife, we're going to get a farm. And she's like, what are you talking about? A year later, we had a farm. Located in Dayton, New York, rancher Biardi has pasture-raised pork and grass-fed Angus. For USDA Radio, Susan Carter, Washington, D.C. June is Dairy Month, and that means we should be supporting our dairy farmers and the industries that help supply them with the various goods that they use. Jim Solfer with the University of Minnesota Extension Service Office shares some insights and talks about the breakfast on the farms, including the one in Morrison County on June 20th out at the Marshick Dairy near peers. Well, it's June Dairy Month again, and I hope uh, some of the people listening, or most of you listening, have had a chance to attend or will be attending a breakfast on the farm. Many of our counties here in central Minnesota do something on a dairy farm in the summer, and if you're originally from a dairy farm or have relatives or just more curious on how modern dairy farms operate, I would encourage you to look it up. I know Stearns County was this last Saturday, so uh, you won't be able to attend that one, but I know there's a number of other ones in some of the surrounding counties that are coming up. You know, why Why do we have dairy, or why is the Minnesota and kind of this part of Minnesota really 
been traditionally a strong area for our dairy production and why did it develop in this area? Well one of the reasons is we've really got land that's real conducive to dairy type farming. We've got land that's got some land that's really roly that's best suited for pastures or alfalfa crops and that works really well but we've also got some really good land that we can raise a good corn and other grains in and so it really is a nice area to be a dairy producer and uh, most of our upper Midwest farmers raise most of their own crops unlike some of the models on the west coast where they purchase a lot of their feed and actually a lot of their purchase feed gets hauled in from here and you know I know protein supplements are up quite a bit now they're down this year but maybe up from a historical average and we do have a lot of byproducts that are available in this area and then another reason that dairy production has really been strong here or has developed here is, is we kind of developed a lot of butter plants originally and that kind of got converted to cheese and the upper Midwest really produces a lot of high quality cheese and so we can be pretty proud of what we have in the, some of these communities. Uh, when you look at where Minnesota's at, we're fourth in the number of dairy farms behind Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and New York. But when you look at for every dairy, for every job that's really involved directly in dairy production, uh, there supports another three jobs throughout Minnesota. And overall, the research at least would support that Minnesota's dairy industry supports about $11.5 billion in economic activity and supports about 38,000 jobs. And so, and a lot of those are right in this area. You think of some of the processing plants in the area. We've got a couple of them right here in Stearns County. You can think of three right off the top of my head. And then, of course, there's another one down in Litchfield that's pretty big. And there's some in some of the surrounding counties. And so I think as we go forward, it's always important important to appreciate all the industries, not just, just the dairy industry, but it tends to be June dairy month right now, but I think all of us can, uh, we really should be appreciating some of the local industries that we've got, and then make sure we support those industries as we support politicians or policies that keep those industries strong, because that's really what helps create a vibrant economy and a good employment base and, and keeps people working and living in this area with a good quality of life that we have. This is Jim Selfer with the University of Minnesota Extension in St. Cloud. Looking at corn first and emergence, USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey says. 91% emerged by June 7th. That's one point ahead of average and also one point ahead of this time last year. Despite those impressive numbers, there were rain delays in the southwestern corn belt. We are seeing some emergence delays in the high plain states, including Colorado and also Kansas. As for corn condition, it's been steady since last week. Still 74% good to excellent, while the percentage rated very poor to poor inches up from 3 to 4%. Those numbers are pretty similar to what we saw in early June of 2014 when the crop was three quarters good to excellent and 4% very poor to poor. It's also a similar picture for soybeans. With rapid planting in the eastern corn belt and a few delays in the southwest. Overall, soybean planting now 79% complete. Minnesota takes the planting lead and Missouri has the slowest pace. Soybean emergence is at 64% complete by June 7th. Condition is 69% good to excellent and 5% very poor to poor. That's five points behind this time last year due to rain. For USDA Radio, Susan Carter, Washington, D.C.